Hi, I'm Amy from the Alti store. I'm going to go over the basics of solar charge controllers with you. First, let's take a look at where a solar charge controller fits into an off-grid solar system. The charge controller goes between the solar panel and the deep cycle battery. A charge controller is an important component in battery-based systems. They are not used in straight grid tied systems as they do not have batteries to charge. Their primary role is to manage charging the battery bank. It prevents it from overcharging and many of them control the rate of the current and voltage at which it charges. More on that in a moment. Some charge controllers have load control where you connect the DC load right to the charge controller instead of to the battery and it will turn on and off based on the voltage of the battery and or the time of day. For example, turning the load off if the battery gets too low or turning on a light from dusk to dawn. At night, the voltage of a battery bank is higher than that of the solar array that it's connected to. Since electricity flows from high voltage to low, without a charge controller, the tendency would be for the electricity to flow out of the battery bank. A charge controller prevents that from happening, allowing the flow to only go one way, into the batteries. Many charge controllers manage charging the batteries by varying the voltage and current to the battery bank based on how full the battery is. Much like pouring a glass of water, when the glass is fairly empty, you can have the faucet on full blast, but when it starts to get full, you want to slow down to prevent overflowing. Likewise, a charge controller sends a lot of power to the battery when it's low, but as it approaches full, it slows down. Once it's full, it will send a smaller amount of power, a trickle charge, to keep it topped off. This is called multi-stage charging. Here's an example from Morningstar of a four-stage charger. With bulk charging, when the battery is low, it will accept all the current provided by the solar array. At absorption, the battery has reached the regulation voltage. The controller begins to hold the voltage constant. This is to avoid overheating and overgassing the battery. The current will taper down to safe levels as the battery becomes more fully charged. Equalization is done with flooded batteries, not sealed batteries like AGM and gel. Many flooded batteries benefit from periodic high voltage boost charge to stir up the electrolytes and level the cell voltages and complete the chemical reactions. Your battery specs will tell you how often and at what rates it wants to be equalized. Float charge is when the battery is fully recharged, the charging voltage is reduced to prevent further heating or gassing of the battery. There's a wide variety of features that are optional on some but not all controllers. In some cases, a display does not automatically come with a controller. It can be added separately for a remote display. A few even have Ethernet connections, allowing you to monitor your system across the web. Temperature compensation will improve the battery bank charging by adjusting the controller's output based on the temperature. Low voltage disconnect is a great feature that allows you to connect your DC load to the charge controller. If the battery voltage gets low, it will turn off the load, preventing the batteries from becoming too low and getting damaged. Some controllers can be used as a diversion or dump load controller, turning power on to a heater to burn off excess power. There are others that have light control functions, turning lights on and off automatically based on dusk and dawn. You're going to hear me talking about nominal voltage, VOC, and VMP. VOC is the open circuit voltage, or what you will measure from a solar panel in perfect test conditions with nothing but a voltmeter connected to it. VMP is voltage at max power, or what the, the solar panel will put out when it's connected to equipment like a charge controller or inverter. Nominal voltage is a way to categorize battery-based solar equipment. Because a higher voltage is required to charge a battery, nominal voltages are used to help see what equipment goes with what. So a nominal 12 volt panel, which actually has a VOC voltage of around 22 volts, plus or minus a volt or two, and a VMP of around 17 volts. And if you count the number of cells or silicon squares on the front, it will likely have 36 cells. Likewise, a panel that was designed to charge a 24 volt battery bank will have a VOC of around 44 volts and a VMP of around 36 volts. Counting the cells will come up with 72, twice as many as a 12 volt panel. If you wire two 24 volt panels in series, or four 12 volt panels in series, 
you can charge a 48 volt battery bank. So this was all well and good for battery based systems. But then along came grid tie systems and 12, 24 and 48 volts became meaningless. So the industry sort of standardized on 60 cell 20 volt nominal panels. Alone, they're too big to efficiently charge a 12 volt battery and too small to charge a 24 volt battery. An MPPT charge controller solved that by reducing the voltage down to the required range and in doing so increasing the current output so you're not losing any power. There are three main types of charge controllers. Shunt controllers that just turn the flow to the batteries on or off and they're really used anymore so we won't really go into them. The two main types you'll find these days are PWM and MPPT. Let's discuss them in greater detail. PWM are generally the less expensive options of the two. A PWM or pulse width modulation charge controller pulses the power sent to the battery bank allowing it to do different charging stages we just discussed. When using a PWM charge controller, the nominal voltage of the solar panel must be the same as the nominal voltage of the battery bank. So if you're using a 12 volt battery, you must use a 12 volt solar panel. If you have a 24 volt battery bank, you must wire two 12 volt panels in series or have one 24 volt panel to make 24 volts. If you have a 48 volt battery bank, you must wire four 12 volt panels in series or two 24 volt panels in series to make the 48 volts. Make sure the charge controller you select is designed for that battery bank voltage. Some can support multiple voltage ranges, others are designed for only one voltage. Note if a PWM charge controller says it can support 12 or 24 volts, both the panels and the battery bank must be one or the other. It is not saying it can take a 24 volt panel to charge a 12 volt panel. It is saying it can work in either a 12 volt or a 24 volt system. Selecting the right charge controller for a PWM system is pretty simple. For a single string, we check the label or the data sheet and confirm that the VOC is 22 volts, that's a nominal 12 volt panel, and the ISC here is an 8.68 amps. We then multiply that ISC, the number of parallel strings, which is one, and multiply it by NEC's safety factor of 1.25 to get 10.85 minimum amperage. Great, I'll round up to a nice 15 amp Morningstar Prostar 15M with a meter. Now let's try it with two parallel strings of the same 140 watt panel. Notice I'm not talking about how many panels are in each string because I'm using a PWM charge controller. I know that I'm using the right number to match the voltage of my battery bank. So I've got one for 12 volt, two in series for a 24 volt, or four in series for a 48 volt battery bank. In this example, I have two parallel strings of two in series for a 24 volt system. I take the 8.68 amps short circuit current times two strings times 1.25 NEC required protection equals 21.7 amps. So I'm going to round up to a midnight solar 30 amp BRAT charge controller. Now we move on to MPPT charge controllers. A maximum power point tracking or MPPT is the most sophisticated, more expensive type of charge controller. It tracks the output of the solar array and adjusts itself so that the output is always maximized. In doing so, it can increase the production of the array by up to 30% over a PWM. Another great advantage is that most MPPT charge controllers can take a higher voltage array, for instance a 60 volt nominal array, to charge a lower voltage battery bank, like 48 volts. This is required if you have 60 cell 20 volt grid tied solar panels that are common and thus less expensive, and use it to charge a battery. It's also very useful if you have to go a distance from your array to your battery bank. The higher the voltage of the solar array, the lower the current going across the wire. Therefore, you can use smaller gauge wire, which will cost less, and have a lower voltage drop, which gets more of the power to your batteries. There are also a few MPPT charge controllers that can take a lower voltage panel and boost it up to a higher voltage battery bank. These are great to use in a 12 volt panel to charge a 36 volt golf cart, but most MPPTs require a higher or equal to voltage panel. Be sure to read the specs carefully. 
To see how an MPPT charge controller works, let's look at a system with one 60 cell PV panel and one 12 volt battery. The charge controller takes the 30 volts from the solar panel and converts it down to around 14 volts to charge the battery. Unlike a PWM charge controller, it doesn't just throw away the extra voltage. It increases the current on the output to maximize the power out. So if it's taking 30 volts in and sending 14 volts out, that's a decrease of a multiple of 2.14. Since it's taking 9 amps in, it will increase that by that 2.14 and output 19.28 amps out. So power in equals power out. So the simplest way to size an MPPT charge controller is to take the total watts of the array and divide it by the voltage of the battery bank. So 270 watt panels times four of them divided by 24 volt battery bank times 1.25 for NEC equals 56 amp minimum charge controller. Cool, I'll use an Outback Flex Power 60. In addition to amps, solar charge controllers are also rated by voltage. A typical 150 volt charge controller can support up to three 20 volt panels in series. You may be saying, but three 20 volt panels in series equals 60 volts. That's way below 150 volts. But the voltage the specs are referring to are the VOC voltage the actual voltage that the panel puts out. That's much higher than the nominal 20 volts or even the VMP. The VOC of a 20 volt panel is actually around 38 volts. So three of those in series is 114 volts. Also note that cold weather increases the voltage output of a solar panel. So if we also figure in, in cold temperature in the winter, we increase the volts even more. At minus 5 degrees Fahrenheit, which we see all the time up here in New England, it adds 20% to the voltage, bringing it up to 136 VOC. So you can see why, at least in cold climates, three 20 volt nominal panels would be the max for a 150 volt charge controller. There are now higher voltage charge controllers available, with some accepting as much as 600 volts in. This is very useful if the array is a long distance away from the battery bank. So again, check the specs to find the right charge controller for you. Well, that's it for a quick summary of solar charge controllers. Check out our website for a great selection of solar charge controllers and all of the other components needed for a solar power system. Also watch more of our videos on our website to learn more. We've got a team of highly trained technical sales reps available to help you plan your system. Give us a call! And don't forget to check out the rest of our site at altistore.com where we're making renewable doable.